As most of you know, I have a love-hate relationship with TikTok and uh, currently, <laughs> I hate it, it's all hate, because I fell down the rabbit hole of placenta phagy TikTok, which is exactly what it sounds like. Get ready. Uh, despite finding the placenta, as I have stated many times, to be the best organ that we have for a variety of reasons, uh, this is not one of them. So put away the snacks and prep your eyeballs for something you will never be able to unsee. And let's jump into it. This is the video that prompted my spiral into placenta TikTok, some of which are great TikToks, by the way. <laughs> None of those am I showing you today, but I think one of y'all sent me this, so I, I can't remember who it was and I'm sorry, uh, but you probably should be thankful because I'm blaming you and all of these people would be too. Oh, my yeah. son was just born. Like five minutes ago, I can't stop crying and I'm about to eat raw placenta. <laughs> oh my god. That's good. What do, do I just swallow it whole? Okay, check it out. Oh, there it is. It's raw placenta with honey from my newborn son that was just born. I can't stop crying. I'm gonna do it. Do I just swallow the whole thing? Sorry, girl, I'm chewing it. I have to show you a little bit, okay? But first I'm gonna deep okay? Testicle king out. <laughs> the process that I went through watching that video was just all over the place. You have this like happiness and joy that you can feel like the raw emotion of this brand new baby who's crying in the background, a very classic newborn cry, and then the way that this person is talking, and then the words that they're saying. Why the honey? I have other questions too, like why? 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 Yeah, actually that's why is the only question that I have. I watched that one and then it just took me down like a spiral and I was just more and more like this the whole time. So here's the next one. It's just as good. I ate my wife's placenta. I don't know if you did this when your kids were born. Like I just have to stop it right there because of how casually this person is like, I don't know if you did that, Joe, when your kids were born. I wish I could see Joe's face because that is not an, a normal thing to ask people. Like this is not ubiquitous. You can't phrase it like that. You can't come at this like that. You can do it, you can talk about it, but that's not, not like that. Born like there's cultures that eat the placenta. Okay, hold on. This is uh, not entirely, entirely true. Although the placenta is spiritually significant in many cultures, particularly in many indigenous cultures, the idea that placenta phagy was common or culturally practiced uh, in many places or in many cultures is is a bit of a stretch. As far as the person who delivered the baby eating the placenta, there is no recording of this being a cultural practice at all, at least according to the 19 page research article that I found, which I will link below. There are a handful of instances in some cultures in very specific circumstances, people who did not deliver the baby consuming the placenta, but even in those cultures where it sometimes happened in specific circumstances, this was not a ubiquitous practice. Any of my friends whose wives get pregnant, I go, hey, if you guys are going to throw it out, I'll take it. So I have a freezer full of human placenta. <laughs> that is next level. You're keeping other people's not just, I mean, why? 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 I just am so confused. Oh my gosh, I'm so confused. Are we all on the same page here that the placenta functions as a filter, basically, to keep bad things away from the fetus. So I just, yeah, like I wouldn't be eating my own and I certainly wouldn't be eating somebody else's. A smoothie that I'm having every morning has placenta, human placenta, Jeez. two eggs, shell on, not washed, no. banana, sticker on, shell on, not shell washed. on. How, how is that what he responds to? After everything that was just said, that is what Joe Rogan responded to. Shell on, not washed, shell on, not shell not on. <laughs> I saw Arnold Schwarzenegger do it, so... You know, of course. 
If Arnold Schwarzenegger does it, the rest of us should. The whole bitter melon, the Manuka honey, Siberian, the pine oil. Like the most disgusting shake ever. Like It tastes like shit and I just down it. <laughs> really? Yeah, I'm like dying. It sounds like it would taste horrible. Why? Why are you doing that? Oh my gosh, I'm so confused. Help. Trigger warning showing a placenta and blood. I was going to encapsulate it, but I didn't. Now she can put it in her smoothie or food. She says she couldn't taste it. Ingesting your placenta can help prevent anemia, boost milk supply, balance hormones, and can lower your chances of having postpartum depression. I specifically included this one because of the claims being made on this slide, and they are not made up by this person. They are commonly repeated amongst people who talk about placentophagy, but there is no good evidence that consuming your placenta actually helps with any of these things. And in fact, there is specifically good evidence in the way of randomized controlled trials that refutes the idea that consuming your placenta would act as a iron supplement or prevention for anemia. This is not true. And this is also the postpartum depression one, the most common reason that people do this. It's not backed up by any science. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean anything except that, you know, it's neutral unless there are harms. And we do have some idea that there could be potential harms here. There have been cases where placenta and capsulates were found to be contaminated with GBS, group B strep, which can cause neonatal meningitis, and actually in one situation potentially linked to a case of neonatal meningitis, specifically with consuming it raw, but even with dehydration and putting into capsules, a lot of times these heat levels are not high enough or for long enough to destroy things like HIV or hepatitis or norovirus, rotavirus. All of these things have been found in placentas and wouldn't be destroyed necessarily by that process. None of the people who do this encapsulation process or dehydration process have like oversight. So nobody's coming through and making sure that they are doing it in sterile conditions or appropriately cleaning the stuff that they use between people. The cross-contamination contam risk is certainly high. I just, it makes me really uncomfortable. So given the fact that we know we don't currently have any evidence that this is beneficial in any way, and there is potential harm as well as just concerns with the process of how it gets done, I just, I don't think that this is something that I would ever recommend. Like that magic bullet, how do you, you can't clean that effectively enough. You know, at the hospital we sterilize things, right? But you can't sterilize that between uses. Just the cross-contamination here is, it, it, I just. What is that? It's the placenta. No. Ugh. We keep the cord of placenta attached until it falls away naturally. Ugh. And we're gonna use it to make some soup. Yep. Ugh. She's throwing that in for a a little lightening of the mood, a little comedic relief. <laughs> we decided to do a lotus birth for our daughter. Here is what we did with the placenta after. An apple tree that will grow with her. So I find this endearing. And again, in many, many cultures, the placenta is highly revered and often kept or planted uh, like they have here. I think that that is really sweet personally. And I I think if you want your placenta, that you should be able to keep it. I don't even care what you're using it for. You should be able to keep it. It's yours. The idea of lotus birth is something we should talk about a little bit. The umbilical cord, it is just allowed to dry off while it is attached to baby after birth, which can take anywhere from a week to 10 days. This is something that has been more common in recent years, but is still relatively uncommon. Unfortunately, it has already, despite being a relatively uncommon practice, been linked in case reports to some really significant problems, including neonatal hepatitis, sepsis, 
endocarditis, including a baby that was admitted to the hospital because of this at just a couple of days old and ended up having to stay for six weeks for IV antibiotics. There are risks with this and that certainly is not something I would medically recommend. But I just wanted to put this in here because I'm not against placentas being, you know, taken, planted. I even, as weird as some people find it, I think even the like little placental art things that people do are quite cute. I am a sentimental person and I think the placenta is super cool. So I hope that this video isn't misinterpreted as me like thinking all placenta liking is weird. I love placentas. I think they're super cool. But I just think consumption is just a bit too far and too close to cannibalism for me. I didn't put this in the video, but I did actually find someone on religious TikTok that was saying consuming the placenta is actually against the Bible for some verse in Deuteronomy. I don't know, but I thought it was interesting regardless. Anyway, I've said my piece. Let's move on. Yes, almost all animals eat their placentas. Google placentophagy. There are many theories as to why. This is true, most animals do eat their placentas and the theories as to why typically revolve around hunger or needing the, that because there's not food around. There's some theories on pain tolerance and pain control and then preventing predation or other animals being able to smell them out because that's out in the open. All of those things are valid reasons for animals to eat their placentas, but I think humans probably do a much better job of addressing all of those things with human ways of addressing them. So yeah, I think we, you know, we can address generally hunger and pain and animal predation with things that aren't eating uh, our own organs or organs we want shared with a baby that we now love. I love working in reproductive health. Like I have been processing placenta samples all month in my lab, which has been amazing. Um, Cause I never have to pack a lunch. <laughs> Another one just thrown in for comedic relief because honestly I need it at this point. Anyway, I just, I think what shocked me about this is that I knew there were people who consumed their placentas and that was something actually I've talked about on this channel a couple of times in the past, just in like Q and A's, but I had no idea there were male partners eating placentas and other people's placentas. Like this just took it to a whole new level for me of like, uh, what the f I just, that's so, I just, I don't know. It just, especially raw but even cooked i don't know okay that's all i hope you've uh suffered happily along with me and i'm sorry that's all i have to say if you uh, liked this video um i don't know if anybody liked this video but uh you can subscribe and i promise i'll never no i can't promise that but it's unlikely that i will soon make another video about uh placentophagy so yeah you can come back safely <laughs> I promise. I'll see you next Monday.